Good day everyone, how is your weekend? I hope your weekend was not like ours because ours was very, very stressful. So we welcome you to another episode of Vespa Z247 where we'll turn the light on Christ. So today I'm going to be the anchor lady feeding all the, the questions and to and this is my name is Peter. Welcome to Expose. Um, for those who have been with us for the past few weeks and for those who are joining us today. Uh, we welcome you to another great edition of uh, this um, 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 platform. Yes, for the past few weeks, if you've been following, we've been on this, the prodigal father, and it's really taking forever. As much as we do not want to believe all the take points, we still don't want to gloss over details because we know there are so many things to learn from, from this story. Last week, I remember, we stopped at the legitimacy of our, de uh, of our desire, saying all oh, desires are valid, that we should express them, we should not suppress them, that the Lord gave the desire. So, but I want to bring the uh, attention and the attention of our audience to this Bible verse. In Matthew 16, verse 24, something like about we should deny our desire. So, we are finding out that some desires um, from that scripture, we're saying we should deny, we should not express it. So, what do you think about that scripture? Would you want to go through that scripture and uh, shed some light on that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, for those who have just, I mean, who have been with us, uh, you understand that we've talked about the younger brother. And we did say that the younger brother um, actually decided to follow a path of self discovery, deciding to look out for what really works for him. And that led him out of the father's presence, and then we knew how he ended up. Um, you know, he began to eat with the pigs, and the Bible said nobody gave him anything, and he began to be in want. And one thing we've been establishing for the past few weeks is to simply say that there is nothing wrong with trying to give expression to our God-given designs, an expression to be the best that we should be. And then the question that Uncle Lydia has actually asked today is to simply say, what about when the Bible talks about we should deny ourselves? Yes. And this is the more reason why some Christians believe that if any Christian has a desire to become this, to become that, uh, it's wrong because the Bible says we should simply deny ourselves. And we're going to have a look at that today. Um, to see, does Jesus, I mean, we, last week if you were with us, we did say that Jesus didn't say anything against his disciples when they were talking about who would be the greatest. All Jesus said was uh, they were going about it the wrong way. So he didn't go against that. So let's talk about this uh, denying, uh, what does it mean to deny ourselves? Does it mean we should shut down every God-given desires? Let's find out. Now I want to have a look at something before we go into that. Yes. That same prodigal father, the, the Luke chapter 15, there's something we need to have a look at. Uh, Luke chapter 15. This were Now Luke chapter 15, if you have a look at um, verse 15. Luke chapter 15, verse 15, it says, And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. This is younger brother. Yeah, okay. Verse 16 says, And he would have... Uh, filled his belly with the ox, and that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Okay. Look at verse 17. I want you to look critically at verse 17. Verse 17 says, And when he came to himself, that's the key word, himself, his personality, who he really is, his person, his identity. Now, this is the old point. The story of the prodigal father. Jesus completely redefined what sin is, he redefined who the Father is, and he redefined what humanity is. See what Bible said about it. He came to what? Himself. Don't forget what we talked about the fact that Bible says deny what? <laughs> Yourself. I can't see the correct. Thank you. He came to himself. It means the major thing about this younger brother wasn't about the fact that he went on a journey of individualism. The major thing wasn't about the father, he went on a journey of self-discovery. It was about, there was something about his journey that has to do with himself. So he came to a realization about the fact that, come on. I'm beyond this. This is about, this is, so, 
all through the time he was just living, it was, there was a pocket, there was a covering. He came to his true self, identity. See, this is the problem of sin. That's why see, the way we define sin is not the way God sees sin. God sees the concept of sin as an issue of identity. About when we use things to cover up who we really are. We, we try to feed our identity from things we engage in every day. So the Bible says, for the very now the Bible says in Luke chapter 15, look at that again from verse 7. He came to what? Himself. All this while he had not come to himself. All this while there were layers, there were things that were covering up who really he is. And the Bible says, for the very first time, this younger brother came to what? Realize himself. So the point is, from the very the beginning of the parable up to this moment, he has used all his adventure as a means of covering up his what? His identity, trying to feed our identity. The Matthew that you quoted yes, talks I'm about really the fact. waiting for that Matthew twenty six. The Matthew twenty six talks about the fact that we must deny what ourselves. We shouldn't use things, things around us, activities, things to cover up, to to feed our identity. The Bible says in Colossians three that Christ is what our life. Humanity has become a specialist. In using everything around him to cover himself up, to feed that identity. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't matter whether people use um, drunkenness, it doesn't matter whether they use money, knowledge, it doesn't matter if they use knowledge, it doesn't matter if they use food, it doesn't matter whether they use relationship, it doesn't matter whether they use family, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if they use friends. People can use anything to feed yes. their identity. So, when you ask them, Who are you? They can define themselves by those very things. So the, the younger brother was on a journey to define himself. That's what the Bible says. He finally came to what? Himself. He couldn't come to himself because things covered up. Things would, himself was covered up with things. So, so he was covered up with his pursuit. His he covered up himself. So he, he, he himself was not even visible to him. That is why the Bible tells us that if you want to follow Jesus... You have to deny yourself. To deny yourself means don't allow yourself to feed on things that would define him except Christ being the definition of who we are. So we should, all those things that we could have laid back on. So it's not about those things. It's not about those things, about using those things to feed ourselves, to define who we are. That is where the problem is. And... For example, if you think this is a matter of sin or something, this is more than that. For example, even when it comes to ministry, some pastors and people who, who, who are actually uh, ministers of God, the very activity they engage in, they use it to feed, become another identity for to them. feed yourself. You can use even good things to feed yourself. Charitable works. Good things that you do, you can use that to feed your identity. So what the Bible is simply saying is, deny yourself from those things that supplies value to you except or outside of Christ. That is anything that is giving us uh, any identity outside Christ, because Christ is our life in the shorter form. Christ is our life, exactly. so Christ is our identity. So whatsoever that is coming away, giving us a false, a fake Identity. So if they ask you who are you, the way, and you think, oh, this is who I am. If that thing is not Christ, be it intellect, be it inheritance, be it anything, yes. personality, fame, whatever we are doing, or whatever we are good at, whatsoever is noble or so, whatever it is, good. as long as it comes and becomes another second nature to us, that is what we should deny. That is the definition of sin. That's why we said the story of the prodigal father. Jesus redefines what is sin. We, we have a very funny concept about sin. We think sin is when you do something evil. But Jesus simply says, anytime, anytime something is used to define you, and that thing doesn't make you see the need of Christ to be your definition, that is sin. So he forgetting about the identity of who he really was, that he was the son. And he was trying to use those, that pursuit to cover up Adventure. himself. That's why the Bible used that word in Luke 15, 17. He came to himself. I mean, those things began to what? 
um, move on and say, oh, this is who I really am. They couldn't find out that because other things covered him up. For those who have get off from last message and feeling like, oh, we can fully express ourselves, express our desire, you are getting the caution in this. Yeah. Yes, as we go to express the desire as our faith, whatever we go out for, yeah. your heart yearns for, it must not come in the way of our identity, which is Christ. So as it comes, if, it, if there's anyone, any of those things coming in, in form, giving, up a, giving us a false identity, we need to deny it, as in Matthew 26. So we need to come to ourselves, just like this younger brother, and know that Christ is our life. So we will not take up any false identity, no matter how good, how noble, how, how, how noble or cosworthy that thing is. Christ must remain our identity. So whatsoever that is coming that way must be denied, must be repressed, be it, it might just be denied or not, it must be repressed. Now there's something I want us to have a look at in book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And I want us to have a look at that. Okay. Fox Corinthians chapter 7, so we can see um, what this simply says. Now, I'll read from, um, from verse 29. Okay. 1 Corinthians 7, 29. Now listen to this. It's an apostolic instruction. It says, But these I say, brethren, the time is short. It remains that both they that have wives be as though they have none. Can you see that? It said, Though they have wives should be as though they have no wives. Now, how do you do that? It means you live life as if you have a wife and you don't have one. That's kind of dichotomy. It means you have it, but it doesn't define you. Look at the next verse. It says, they that weep as though they weep not. It means it's saying that even if you are in sorrow, sorrow shouldn't define you. Now, look at the next verse. It says, though that rejoice as though they don't rejoice. Now, you see, people think this issue is about being rich or not rich? <laughs> Whichever situation we find ourselves. How can you use weeping and joyfulness in the same verse? And it says, if you're weeping, don't let... It's one thing to weep. It's a whole different thing for you uh, to be consumed by weeping. It's one thing to rejoice. It's a whole different thing for you to be consumed by rejoicing. It's one thing for you to have money. It's a whole different thing for money to have you. So, you see, the story of the prodigal father is Jesus redefining the concept of sin. A sinner is not just a sinner because he did evil or did wrong or did the right thing or wrong thing. That's not the point. Do we define ourselves by something else except Christ? Oh, now that you're talking about those definitions, I yeah. just quickly remember the stories of when Jesus was illustrating the Reason the poor, the rich, and the, you know, it was defined by the rich man, the rich man, the rich yeah, man. Yeah, like the other young Now, young she's young. made a very good point. You, you remember the story of the rich man and Lazarus? <laughs> the rich man had no name. Have you noticed the rich man and Lazarus in Jesus' parable? We know Lazarus had a name. That's Lazarus. The rich man was nameless. Why? Have you ever wondered why? The rich man had no name. That, that is his identity. The world has become his identity. That is who he is. Rich. Now, again I say, don't get this twisted. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or you're poor. It doesn't matter whether you're in sorrow or you're rejoicing. It doesn't matter whether you have or you don't have. That's not what Jesus is saying. If you think it's about being rich or not being rich, if you check this 1 Corinthians 7, uh, verse 30, it talks about if you're weeping as if you don't weep, if you're rejoicing as if you're not rejoicing. So those are two opposite human experiences. <laughs> but he said, it doesn't matter whether you're weeping, it doesn't matter that you're rejoicing. The key thing is, whatever you're engaging must not define who you are. So I think we should go to the uh, next verse. Those who buy things should live, should live as if they own nothing. Okay. Those who, who use the things of this world should live as if those things are not important to them. Okay, can you see that? It, it said, if we use anything of this world as if it's not important. See, the whole point of, this, of the prodigal father's story about a younger brother is, it's not that he went on a journey of self-discovery that was a problem. It was about the fact that the self-discovery journey was having him. And that's what the Bible says, he came to himself at some point. Identity. So it's not bad to, no, no. to desire leadership, 
just like last week. It's, it's, not, it's not even bad. I remember something. You know, people uh, some years ago, uh, there, there were some Christians who were arguing about when Jesus did say that um, on the last day, some people will say that we've cast out demons in your, your name. name. We prophesied in the name of uh, in your name, and then Jesus said, "I would say to them, I don't know you." Mm -hmm. And then some people, some Christians, try to interpret that scripture by simply saying, "You know what? It means that you can prophesy and cast out demons, and if you live in sin, uh, Jesus wouldn't know you." Well, I don't know how they interpreted that because there was nothing about committing sin in that scripture. There was nothing about living an holy life. And I'm not saying you you have to live a life of sin. That's not the point. I'm just saying we cannot read our human reasoning into the scripture. There was nothing about the committed sin. Now, what was the problem? The scripture explains itself. They came to Jesus and they said, we cast out demons in your name. Is this is, we are demon caster. That's who we are. And they said again that we prophesy. You see, we are, we're, we're, we're prophets. That, that's our identity. Because they came to Jesus and told Jesus who they think they really are. Yeah, that thing has had them. Prophecy has had Casting them. out devils and prophesying had them. That is who they define themselves as. And Jesus said, well, if that's your identity, I don't know that. <laughs> I'm not your life. I, Christ, am not your life. I don't even know who you are. See, we are simply saying to the world that Jesus redefined what sin is. And you see, there's one thing about human nature. Human nature, we always try to use something to cover up. And, and that explains Adam and Eve yeah. when they fell. You see, before God came back into the garden, they already had to cover up. That's one thing that we always use everything. We use money. We use even intellect. intellect. We use, um, I mean, family. We use relationships, romance. We use everything we can find to cover up what we really have. That, that's just a human ministry, tendency. Charity work. Even ministry, church ministry. We can use church ministry to cover up who we really are. And it's just a human tendency. And what Jesus is simply saying is, is if, you stick, if you stick with us on this expose, we will carry on in the next few weeks to the elder brother. And you will find out that it doesn't make any difference whether you do the right thing, in quote, or you do the wrong, thing. Do the wrong thing, in quote. The question is, do those things define your identity? Is your life in Christ... Colossians 3 says, when Christ, who, who is, is our, our life, life shall, shall appear, appear, then we shall appear with him in glory. Christ who is our life. That's the key word. Who is my life? If I'm stripped down to nothing, am I left with Christ? Or have I covered up my identity with everything around me? This is what salvation is all about. This is what redemption is all about. And this is where the younger brother had a problem. So it's not about the fact that this younger brother... We wanted to find out. It wasn't about self-discovery that was the key thing. It was about the self-discovery is to him a means of identity. So Luke 15, 17 says he came to himself. So this was all about himself. This was all about his identity. And that is all about it. So please out there, don't let anybody tell you that, oh, as a Christian, you shouldn't, uh, you know, go to this level of significance. You shouldn't go that far. Or if you... If you possess that, or if you go find ambition, you, this is not, all those things, this, that's not a problem. The problem is, whatever things you do in this world, you can go as far as you want to. But, but according to 1 Corinthians 7, from verse 30 to 32, it says, as if you don't have those things. Yes. It, it covers all it, In fact, it covers every ground. In fact, it goes as far as family. It says, if you have a wife, can you live like you don't have a wife? If you have a child, can you live like you don't have a child? If you have family, can you live like you have no family? If you are joyful, you have a lot for. If you are joyful, you, you have, have so, a lot to be happy for. So, so many things to be happy about. Can you live like those things are not there? Now, and how do you... If such, I see they're not there. You see, this is why Christianity is not Buddhism. You know, in, in, in Buddhism or some other religion, they, they'll tell you, you know what, you, you, want to be, to, you want to attain a level of spirituality... Yourself. You have to strip yourself of all these enjoyments. You have to strip yourself of being happy and rejoicing. No, the, strip yourself of your possessions. Strip yourself you know, from family. Strip yeah. yourself from family. Live in the monastery. Commitment. Yeah. Don't. The more you want to enjoy this world, your spirituality level will come down. Well, that's not what Jesus never thought anything like that. <laughs> in fact, the Bible says, "Rejoice, rejoice." 
But can you rejoice and still live like you're not rejoicing? Can you have millions and billions in your account and still live like you don't have? The only way to have those things and live like you don't have them, the only way is if Christ defines who you are. Christ that is the only way. There is no other way. That's why no religion on earth. Philippians will say, "Put on the Lord Jesus Christ." That's put on Christ. Yes. No, so no religion for the flesh. Make no provision for anything to express for any other identity. That's put it. Put it on. That will be your identity. Yeah, that that, that is it. Thing. That is it. You see, humanity would always give you advice in this way or that way. They say, oh, "Well, you know." You have to have enough or you don't need to have enough to, to be generous or whatever. They always give advice on the left or the right. But Christ gives no such advice. Christ simply says, I don't care what you have or what you don't have. If you look at Jesus' um, disciples, if you look at them, people tend to use uh, Peter as an example when they were going to the gate, you know, beautiful. When Peter said, silver and gold, I have none. Yes. And that which I have, I give unto you. When he told that man that was lame. And people say, can you see right there? You cannot have enough money and say you are a disciple of Christ. They use that as an example. And you tell people, that's not true. Why? If you look at an example, Joseph Arimathea. Joseph Arimathea, the Bible says he was a rich disciple of Jesus. He was the one that was... Now, mind you, Joseph Arimathea was not a rich donor to Jesus' ministry. That was not the word. The Bible says, because I know in churches you can have from some people that have money, they're not committed to Christ, they just give money to church. The Bible said Joseph Arimathea was, was a rich disciple. Matt, they were disciple. And yet he was rich. So forget about whether Jesus had people who followed him who didn't have any money. And Jesus had people who followed him, like Joseph Arimathea, who had enough money. In fact, the reason why they gave Jesus' body to the disciples to Joseph. was because of Joseph Arimathea, read the Bible, because he had so much financial influence that the Jews had to give the body of Jesus to him, because he had financial So, Jesus had disciples of varied circumstances, of varied classes. situations, of classes. That's not the problem. See, the problem of Christianity is trying to define ourselves with one or that. Forget it, that's not the point. The question is, Christ. who is your life? Does Christ define us? Do we know the Bible says that we're bought with the price of the blood of Jesus? And that is our value. You are as valuable as the blood. That's the price that Christ placed on us. The question is, you only buy things based on what you think they're, 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 they're worth. worth yeah. You only pay for things in the market if you think it's worth that thing. The Bible says, when Jesus will redeem us, he paid for us with the price of his blood. First Peter will say we are redeemed with no perishable oh, things. First Peter 1 18 19 says, For you are born again not of the corruptible seed, things. but of the incorruptible seed of the world which lives and abides forever. It means that's your value. Hey, the blood, the, the seed of the world. That's, Jesus placed that value on us. No matter your certificates, I believe school. You're rich, you're, you're poor, you're tall, you're short, you're weeping, you're, you're, you're rejoicing. You have much, you, you have, have wives, you don't have wife, you're a bachelor, you're married. Jesus is saying, don't ever fall into the deception of defining yourself, by, yourself those by those things. And I think, you see, if you follow church history, the church has always swapped in between. At some point in time, mm -hmm. it was very, very um, fashionable. fashionable to be poor. In fact, when you are poor and you don't have I nothing, they say, oh yes, that's the true minister of God. And later, it switched. Mm -hmm. It switched and then later it was a matter of saying, if you have enough faith to have enough money, that gives you a true disciple. The church keeps 